2016. Our speakers today are from the regional CC Cybersecurity Collaboration Projects. Our host today is me, Amy starzinski Cottons. The meeting will begin shortly. Participants are muted. You may type questions into the chat box during the presentation. The presentation is being recorded. Okay, okay, go ahead. Yep. Um, okay. Give me one sec. One second. Sure. Here. Welcome to the CTSC webinar for December 12, 2016. I am your host, Amy Strzinski Cobbins. Today's topic is the CC Regional Cybersecurity Collaboration Project. This is a group presentation with an introduction by our CC Program Director at the NSF, Anita Nikolic. Shi Wang Fu of the New England Cybersecurity Operation and Research Center will also be presenting, along with James Joshi, Joshi and Brian Stangle of Security Assured Cyber Infrastructure in Pennsylvania. Yaroslav, Yaroslav leader of Substrate for Cybersecurity Education, a platform for training, research, and experimentation, and Jill Gemmel of Southeast Scientific Cybersecurity for University Research will be presenting as well. CTSC is the NSF Cybersecurity Center of Excellence, and these webinars are part of its mission to deliver high-quality, actionable guidance regarding cybersecurity to the NSF community. More information about CTSC can be found at trustedci.org. Before we begin, I have a few items to note. First, this presentation, again, is being recorded. Second, participants are welcome to ask questions during the session using the chat box in the Adobe Connect window. We will accept questions after the presentation as well. Anita, you can now begin. Thank you very much, uh, CTSC, for hosting us. Um, just to remind everybody, the CTSC is our Cybersecurity Center of Excellence. So uh, thank you for bringing all these folks together on uh, very cold Monday morning in December to listen. I just want to talk really briefly about CC for just a couple minutes. Um, the presentations you're going to hear about were uh, the four awards given in the regional category last year. So just to reiterate, if you're not totally familiar with CC, um, the whole solicitation, the program uh, encompasses activities that impact the security of science, engineering, and education environments. So this is not a basic research program. So last year we had two areas. One was the regionals, which you'll hear about, and one encompassed all sorts of submissions in secure and resilient architecture, however that's defined. Um, I just want to tell folks that the success rate for this uh, last year was very, very low, meaning we got a bunch of really good submissions. So the projects you're going to hear about, these are, these are just top-notch, best of the best, um, a lot of great submissions. This year CC just came out about a week ago. So if you're interested, there is not a regional area, but there are two areas that might pique your interest. One is, again, the secure and resilient architecture, three-year awards. Um, again, proofs of concept, prototypes around science and engineering environments. The other section is around cybersecurity enhancement. Uh, please take a look at these if um, you're interested in enhancing what your campus does or what your site does with regard to security. These are two-year awards, a million dollars each. And we look towards things like a partnership with the CISO or the campus IT. Finally, um, so I'm here to listen for a little bit. Um, and I want to know how we can help you. So if there's areas that have been overlooked, we, we've done regional, we've done enhancement, we've done resilience. If there are areas particular to you, you that you think we've overlooked, tell me about it. And if you have some big challenge or success story that you feel NSF should be aware of in order to further our plans in cybersecurity, let me know. Um, can I help connect you with some, some good work or research or researchers? Let us be a connector for you. And finally, if you want to be a reviewer for CC, if you think you have some insight into this area, please send me an email. We're always looking for reviewers to come to NSF and read interesting proposals. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to our first one on the New England Cybersecurity Operation Research Center. All right, we have Xing Wang Fu of the New England Cybersecurity Operation and Research Center. Go ahead, Xing Wang. OK. Can you guys hear me? Uh, can you hear me? Yep, loud and clear. You sound great. OK. Yeah. So uh, so my name is Chi Wen Fu. I'm on the PI of uh, this uh, project. And uh, so here's uh, our project title. 
And uh, so we want to thank NSF for the support. We are also very excited to meet you guys and uh, see what uh, you guys are doing. And um, so our project title is the New England Cybersecurity Operation and Research Center. So I'm the PI. We also have three co-PIs. And uh, we also have Keith Moran. He's also online here from UMass President's Office. And uh, so let me briefly introduce uh, what is uh, the core center. So the core center is a, a collaboration between UMass Law and the office of the president of uh, UMass. So the UMass has five campuses, and UMass Law is one of the five campuses. And uh, the administration of uh, all the five campuses actually is a kind of a, we have a, a president for all five campuses. So this office is located in Shrewsbury, Massachusetts. So our operation center will be located at uh, the UMass uh, data center in Shrewsbury, uh, Massachusetts. And then we also have the satellite center, uh, center at uh, UMass at Lowe. And uh, so the two center, I mean not two centers, uh, the two sites will collaborate closely for everything. And uh, but UMass Lowe, cent uh, I mean location, will focus on research. And uh, the Shrewsbury Center will focus on the actually the operation, but the two centers will collaborate closely. And uh, so here, uh, so we have built a long list of uh, partnership with uh, local institutions and uh, industry partners. So I'm going to talk about that later. So let's look at uh, the service of uh, the core center. Our focus is uh, for under-resourced colleges and universities. So we want to pro provide them uh, the cybersecurity operation. The, the meaning of cybersecurity operation is that we want to monitor their networks so that whenever there's something bad, really bad happening, we are going to notify them. Okay, we are, going to, we are also going to offer other services like uh, education and um, uh, assessment, and I'm going to talk about the details later. So here is uh, the long list of our partnerships. So you can see here we have but once the cybersecurity center, this is a, a local uh, center organized by companies. It has uh, more than like 20 companies and uh, universities. So we have a close collaboration with them. We just won the best poster award this year uh, at this, uh, I mean, ACSC uh, annual meeting. Okay, so let's look at uh, the technical part of uh, our project. So the, the key part of our Project is a cybersecurity operation. It's one of the two major uh, things we are going to do. And um, so our cybersecurity operation will be based on the NIST cybersecurity framework that was actually released uh, in 2014. And uh, the, the NIST framework actually is a good guideline for companies, for any, anybody to run their cybersecurity. And uh, so we are actually, uh, ha we have a very good analogy about the cybersecurity. You can see the, the bottom here. We have a, a picture here, right? So we actually call this as a controlled factory. So what we do is like this. So when you want to secure your campus, your institutions, whatever you want to secure, and um, so you have to identify your assets. Assets means your networks, your data, and whatever else you want to secure. You, those assets will go through a sequence of uh, steps and then the output will be actually the managed assets with a strong control or the controls you want based on your financial status. And um, so here we, we understand that people may not have money, so that so we basically actually will give guidance to our uh, uh, people, to other other companies and uh, uh, those colleges, of what they can choose, open source or uh, I mean also. Uh, other kind of uh, choices. So this is uh, about how we actually run our cybersecurity operations. So let's look at uh, those detailed services you can see here. So we have uh, threat and uh, vulnerability management practice, and uh, so we are going to do this for them. And we also have a cybersecurity program design and build a service. Here the program means, okay, if you follow the steps we recommend, okay, then your campus will be secure. So this. Uh, kind of a weird name, we call it as programs. You follow our 
uh, steps, our guideline that you will be secure, and uh, of course, to some extent. And uh, so cybersecurity operation, as I just mentioned, we are already providing this 24-7 uh, service to some uh, local uh, colleges and also for UMass Law and for our UMass campuses. Our goal here for this project is to extend this service to other uh, universities and colleges. And uh, we have already have a long list of uh, colleges who want to uh, work with us to secure their campus. And uh, so, so here, okay, so then we'll also have number four here, cybersecurity risk management practice, and uh, also cybersecurity education. And we just host uh, uh, the New, in New England Cybersecurity Awareness Day uh, in October. And uh, there was uh, more than actually 100 participants. So we are going to do a lot of this kind of outreach. And uh, we are also going to offer uh, internship to students so that they will be familiar with the state of the art cybersecurity operation. And uh, we are going to upgrade our facility at uh, UMass President Office and also UMass Law so that we can actually do better. Okay. And uh, so that's about our cybersecurity operation. So let's look at uh, the research and other things will be done here. So the research you can see here, uh, we plan to offer services to a lot of uh, uh, universities and uh, colleges in New England area. And uh, that means we are going to get a lot of data. And uh, so w with the data, then we can do a lot of things. Then we can derive the baseline truth of uh, several attacks and, uh, and trends we all know, okay, I mean, uh, the false alerts are a big problem, right? So we are going to actually manually uh, check those alerts and uh, figure out the baseline truth. That's the only way I mean, which is reliable. And uh, so we are also going to uh, purchase uh, some facility to do research on big data. And uh, so we are going to use the behavior-based methodology. This is something we have been doing. And uh, so th that will be fantastic to get uh, uh, the work to do. Okay, so the education. And UMass Law actually is a, a, a CEER by NIC and the DHS. And um, so we are, we, have, we are going to offer a lot of courses. And uh, so you can see here, right, we, we, are, we are going to offer internship co-ops and other things. And uh, I also mentioned outreach. We have been doing this for, for some time. Okay. And... Uh, I think that's what I can see here. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's my uh, that's our project. And uh, if we have time, we can talk about uh, the details at the end of this uh, uh, meeting. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Shingwon. Next up, we have James Joshi, Joshi and Brian Stengel of the Security Assured Cyber Infrastructure in Pennsylvania. Hi, uh, this is James Joshi. Um, thanks to DSC for organizing this meeting. Uh, so I'll go over, uh, uh, give a brief overview of our project. Uh, uh, so to start with, this is a list of people involved. Uh, it's mainly uh, the uh, members of our uh, cybersecurity center at University of Pittsburgh. Uh, LERSAS is the name of the center. And Brian Stengel, who is also in the meeting, uh, is uh, representing the uh, uh, Information Technology Office of University of Pittsburgh uh, with extensive experience in campus cyber infrastructure. The others are my colleagues from the School of Information Science, LERSAS Center. Uh, a quick note about LERSAS, it's uh, also a NSA designated CAE uh, research uh, center, and we also have Cyber Corps, NSF Cyber Corps, SFS program. Uh, so with regards to this particular project, uh, our motivation comes from the fact that we have uh, tremendous growth in uh, and innovation in information technology uh, sector, and so there's unprecedented opportunity for driving scientific research and discovery through data, uh, the extensive amounts of data that we have. But at the same time, uh, the, the reliance that we have as a society, as individual person on the information technologies uh, is making this cybersecurity issue a huge, huge concern. 
Uh, so for data-driven scientific research and discovery activities, uh, it can be a huge setback if we are not uh, properly protecting the infrastructures that allow us to do uh, the scientific research, education, and discovery. And also, of course, uh, we, are, we are aware of uh, the growing national security issue that comes, uh, that aligns with the cybersecurity concerns. So the, the key challenges for our project uh, was uh, if we have public and private sector uh, that own cyber infrastructure and that can be shared within a regional uh, uh, sector, uh, that would be tremendously good, especially for uh, institutions that are very resource constrained. And that's uh, the need of the hour. We need to interlink the cyber infrastructure. We need to share them, and of course, uh, that and that makes the cyber cybersecurity concerns even uh, more critical. So we need to make sure as we share and uh, interlink the cyber infrastructure to foster data-driven scientific uh, research and education, uh, how we protect that is uh, becoming a very important issue. And also cybersecurity needs of different institutions, uh, different sectors, uh, they vary significantly and uh, we need to find ways to manage the institutional risk and uh, protect the resources. Uh, so we, we need to be aware of uh, these varying degree of uh, challenges and in different sectors. Uh, so uh, there's a need for uh, establishing security best practices and more importantly, uh, from our perspective, making sure there are uh, better collaboration approaches among all the stakeholders uh, because sharing resources, expertise, information related to cyber infrastructure and how to protect them is very critical to make sure we foster this uh, environment that allows for data-driven scientific research and education. So our main goal was to address the issue of uh, forming regional collaboration and partnership uh, uh, framework among all the cyber infrastructure providers and users. And this is also, we believe, is a strong need for a national cybersecurity issue. So for this project uh, called SACPA, um, our main objective is to establish a regional collaboration and partnership framework, and we call it SACPA for Security Assured Cyber Infrastructure in Pennsylvania. And our goal is to provide critical support to uh, institutions that need or have uh, cyber infrastructure, especially with focus on smaller academic institutions and other resource constrained uh, institution in this region. And we would like to also enable concerted activities to really help promote the use of effective cybersecurity techniques, tools, best practices to ensure, uh, to address the need for security assured cyber infrastructure. So our hope is uh, by the end of this project, we'll create a SACPA framework uh, to really model uh, to provide a model for regional collaboration and partnership uh, that can possibly be adopted by other regions or even extended to address the national cybersecurity issue. Uh, for this project, we have three key tasks. Task one is basically to develop and deliver regional workshops uh, with focus on cybersecurity for cyber infrastructures. So we'll be organizing three workshops in Pittsburgh, area, and the goal of these, uh, works, these workshops will be identifying challenges, capabilities in the region, uh, understanding the, the cybersecurity posture of uh, all the cyber infrastructure providers that we could partner with, and trying to come with uh, partnership collaboration models uh, for the regional uh, collaboration. So task two will be uh, based on the outcomes and presentations and sharing of information in the workshops, we will collaboratively develop training awareness materials uh, catered to different groups of uh, people from different institutions. 
um, based on their needs, based on their capabilities, and so forth. And the last task is uh, to establish uh, the framework that we have called as SACPA um, to foster sharing of uh, resources, sharing of expertise and information related to securing the cyber infrastructures in the region. And um, also best practices, the knowledge uh, and expertise uh, that are important to help each other in, uh, in securing the cyber infrastructures uh, that we have in the region. And uh, when we submitted our proposal, we had a list of uh, initial partners, and we are constantly exploring for new ones. Uh, some of the notable ones that we already have uh, established uh, partnership for this project, or we already have, uh, as an institution, uh, uh, been working together with. So Keystone Initiative for Network-Based Education and Research is a uh, large institution in, uh, in Pennsylvania, and uh, they are uh, interlinked with a lot of the schools uh, across the region. And we are partnering with them to, for instance, reach out to all these schools uh, to bring them on board in this uh, effort. Uh, a key partner in the project is also our university's uh, computing services and uh, systems division. Uh, and Brian, um, my colleague Brian, uh, represents that. Uh, and uh, so they have the knowledge about securing the campus infrastructures, and we'll be uh, building on that experience and uh, the practices to to foster uh, to achieve the goals that we have set for this uh, project. And there are others listed here, Open Science Grid, uh, Center of Trustworthy Scientific Computing, Internet 2, and so forth. Uh, locally, within Pittsburgh, we have National Cyber Forensics and Training Alliance that we have already been partnering for both research and education. FBI is also our partner, uh, especially we have, un we have ongoing uh, uh, research education projects uh, for high school students where NCFTA and FBI are our partners and we have courses that uh, are applicable to high school students. Uh, we develop through our partnership. Uh, UPMC medical facility here uh, is one of the biggest institutions in the region and they have uh, significant cybersecurity uh, capabilities as well as requirements, and uh, we already have partnership with them in uh, another project, and we are trying to leverage that to bring the uh, the expertise, the resources that they can share uh, through our project. SEI CERT uh, is a, a big player in the cybersecurity area, and uh, they are next to our institution, so we have an on ongoing partnership. Uh, both in research and also in curriculum uh, sharing, uh, teaching uh, assignments, and so forth. And we're uh, leveraging that to, uh, uh, to build this partnership in this project. Uh, in terms of evaluation, it's mainly based on the, the workshop attendance, the, the topics that will be covered, and also the materials, uh, the training awareness materials that we'll develop, and feedback from uh, the participants in the workshops as well as uh, the stakeholders who will share, uh, contribute, and so forth. So timeline uh, for the project, we are aiming for the, our first workshop. Uh, uh, our proposed date was March, but we are hoping to do it sometime between March and May depending on what other conferences are being held and how we maximize the participation and so forth. And the second workshop uh, will be uh, around October, November time frame next year. And then we'll have a, a third workshop. And uh, so we have specific goals for each workshop. For instance, the first one will be to try to understand the cyber infrastructures that we have in the region, what are the capabilities different stakeholders might be able to contribute or bring on the table for discussion, and establishing basic network 
work uh, among the, the stakeholders to explore this partnership framework. Um, more details are, of course, uh, provided, and would, I would be uh, glad to share that. Uh, with that, I think I conclude uh, the brief overview, and I'll uh, uh, request uh, my colleague, Brian, to add anything if I have missed. Hello? No, no James, you've uh, hit everything well. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. All right, thank you, Brian and James. Uh, next up, we have Yaroslav Flieder from the Substrate for Cybersecurity Education, a platform for training, research, and experimentation. Oh, hi, so uh, my name is Yarda Flieder. I'm at the George Washington University, and I'll be talking about SEPTER as was just uh, spelled out, it uh, stands for Substrate for Cybersecurity Education Platform for Training, Research, and Experimentation. Now, before I get to my slides, I just want to uh, uh, make a few sort of introductory comments about what was driving our thinking uh, while we proposed and what we're planning to do. So uh, from sort of a broader perspective, cybersecurity is a new discipline, uh, which is neither well-defined or sensibly delineated. And really just it's a jumble of electrical engineering, networking, cryptography, psychology, social sciences. And uh, we believe that cybersecurity cannot be taught outside of this context. In other words, we believe that it's got to be uh, taught uh, in an environment where people can actually get training in all the you know, requirement, you know, required components of basically particular cybersecurity uh, situation. Now, what we're planning to do is we just provide a truly holistic approach towards the training of well-rounded experts. we basically trying to provide an environment and create a continuing interest in cyber education by opening a path leading to a long-term rewarding careers in cybersecurity and cyber informatics engineering. And uh, we sort of philosoph you know, from the sort of philosophical standpoint, you know, what we just, uh, you know, believe is cybersecurity is a very complex uh, area. And in many ways, you know, when you look, say, for example, medicine, um, we don't expect our doctors to be a product of, you know, two-week online course. And, uh, you know, from sort of evolutionary perspective, um, um, human body, uh, actually cybersecurity compared to human body is about, you know, orders of magnitude faster, the evolution of. And uh, we believe that we, create, we have to create experts which will be selecting uh, cybersecurity as their lifelong career and basically continuing to educate themselves continuously. Um, so uh, SEPTER itself is a project which is a project between uh, George Washington University, uh, the Cyber Academy in the College of Professional Studies, and in collaboration with Michigan Cyber Range, which is a facility operated by Merit Network. Um, our goal is to basically bring these two facilities together and provide credit-bearing practicums and courses and make this, make this uh, effort to be a part of uh, completion and bachelor's degrees in cybersecurity. Um, so the foundation of this, of this uh, project is actually a platform which was previously funded by NSF. It's called MSX, uh, Multi-Service Exchange, and originally was, uh, was designed to provide uh, flexible support for uh, different domain scientists for their data and inst uh, scientific instrument workflows. What we we basically planning to take this platform, which is developed and currently operating in actually multiple campuses, and integrate it with uh, Michigan Cyber Range. Now, let me just, uh, somebody moved my slides. Uh, let's... So now I will go now I'll go basically through the, the acronym and I'll go and explain what is what in the different letters. So we'll start with substrate. You can see on the sort of the background of the slide is basically two maps. It's the Michigan and Virginia. And it's the span of the substrate. It's a physical span. There are facilities which are being utilized in, uh, at, on a merit footprint in Michigan cyber range and in Northern Virginia and uh, basically Foggy Bottom, D.C. Um, the motivation for this project was really just uh, the situation in cybersecurity. And uh, currently in the US, there is a shortage of about hundreds of thousands of openings 
to fill in cybersecurity positions. In the Northern Virginia itself, it is about 17,000, and that's basically spanning this, you know, few counties, basically London County, Fairfax County, Arlington County is missing 17,000 people. And uh, we believe that the you know, reason for the shortages is that cybersecurity is viewed as a sort of a gimmick. Uh, you know, some people just, uh, you know, sign up for a course and, uh, you know, get two weeks of videos and very basically very few um, real, you know, hands-on experiences. And uh, basically what they're lacking is the realistic environments, what actually is, has been coined as cyber ranges. And they do exist. And um, Michigan, MCR, uh, cyber range is one of the best. Uh, we uh, looked into, uh, we actually toured the facility and we had some demonstration. In it, and uh, I will get to it in the next few slides, but it's a sort of top of the line uh, facility which provides training for both commercial and government interest, including, you know, big military organizations like NATO. Um, so uh, why this is a regional? Uh, we basically have two regional aspects. Uh, one is collaboration within region, and that would be within Virginia. We basically bring together academia. That would be our, you know, our own campus plus, Virgi you know, campuses in Virginia, like Nor Northern Virginia Community College. Uh, we collaborating with other campuses, you know, UVA, uh, Virginia Tech. Uh, we bring in industry, and that's actually uh, Northern Virginia is very rich in uh, sort of cybersecurity development and uh, you know uh, activity. There's a lot of incubators and accelerators. Some of them are uh, funded by the Commonwealth uh, government. Some of them are private. We work. We've been working with them, and uh, we are actually focusing in this particular project the component which will be outside of uh, Michigan Cyber Range and will be physically located on our campus will be focusing on SCADA and PLC devices and uh, because of uh, the industrial controls uh, cybersecurity is actually critical uh, it's a critical infrastructure we have to protect and uh, there is a lot of activity in uh, Northern Virginia region which is focusing on bringing you know de developing uh, physical devices which need to be tested and workforce which needs to be uh, um, trained to use. Um, then the other aspect would be the cross-region uh, collaboration and that's basically collaboration between two big regionals. Uh, one would be Karen which is our regional op optical network which spans DC and Northern Virginia and uh, Merritt which is uh, one of the oldest, the oldest uh, regional optical network in, uh, in uh, Michigan. Now, platform itself, this is a very sort of a, you know, 30,000 foot uh, overview of what we are actually planning to do. On the left-hand side, you see MCR, the Michigan Cyber Range. And as I said, it's actually a very well-developed facility. Almost very, I was very impressed with what I saw. And it's, uh, it's a virtualized uh, environment sitting on top of Merit Network connected to Internet 2. And its capability involves basically just you have capacity to s instantiate full cities with full digital infrastructures. And uh, when uh, they call it Alpha Bell, when Alpha Bell comes up, you will have corporations, schools, courthouses, traffic uh, controls. You have actually connected cars which can be hacked. And uh, they've developed a wonderful system of training from basically very basics to very advanced. And they're offering this to uh, basically local and global entities which wish to basically practice their skills either in attacking or defending infrastructures like that. We are expanding this and integrating it with our system, which is on the right-hand side, which is the MSX I mentioned previously. It's an NSF-funded platform, which uh, is being retooled to uh, host uh, cyber uh, security uh, applications. We gluing it together and basically extruding uh, the M MCR's uh, secure environment through uh, AL2S, uh, through Merit Internet 2 and Karen to our location, and to enable both classroom use, so direct connect connectivity of our classrooms into the Michigan Cyber Range and their visualization engines, and actually ha allowing local companies and local developers to bring in their own devices and physically plug them in and use Michigan Cyber Range to develop courses, practice, benchmark their devices. Um, training. So um, T in the scepter stands for training. And as I mentioned uh, in the beginning, we basically believe that we cannot have a reasonable cyber, cyber infrastructure and a cyber, secure cyber infrastructure without uh, 
force, labor force, which is trained by which is trained with sort of long-term perspective. So our goals are to provide uh, education for traditional, non-traditional students, the people who want to basically do uh, degree completions, transferring from uh, community colleges, or non-traditional students, which would be, for example, uh, you know, departing active duty uh, personnel, say, for example, from uh, uh, the Marine Corps in Quantico, which is another, you know, uh, area which we basically in, involved in, in the, you know, the Stafford region to bring in this facility and expand this to uh, Northern Virginia Community College and local campuses. So these people, the non-traditional students, can actually take uh, participate in this education and then extend it and to bachelor and master degrees in an accredited university like ours. Um, we have made this uh, basically. We, uh, we have made this an uh, integral component of uh, George Washington Cyber Academy. Uh, our course is actually starting in January. We will be starting with uh, practicum in intrusion detection and um, uh, risk mitigation. And uh, again, what I mentioned before, the goal of this training is to basically encourage continuing education, for basically just create experts which will see this as a long-term, lifelong careers. And last but not least, research and experimentation. Uh, so what we're basically offering here is a heterogeneous environment. And uh, as I mentioned before the, the opening, uh, cybersecurity is a collection of different fields and areas spanning mathematics, electrical engineering, behavior sciences and so forth. And what we actually realize is we have this environment here. We basically contain students, instructors, researchers, the participants of uh, the, uh, the activities. Uh, we have engineers. We have multiple organizations with different missions. We basically can fix different concepts and devices. And this on its own already uh, uh, started, uh, sparked quite an interest from different, uh, different researchers. We had a uh, very interesting conversation with somebody from the Temple University who is actually a criminologist and interested in the behavior aspects of cybersecurity. Um, she actually, the professor there, wants to uh, observe the teams if they participate in these different exercises. So as, as basically this uh, start, you know, is uh, ramping up, we will be bringing on a sort of uh, unexpected, unexpected participants to this project, and people basically we, we basically created a platform which is um, more applicable to more more areas than we originally thought. And uh, the last thing, you know, the experimentation basically what we're offering is in experimenting with policies, the implications of policies. We can, we have actually connected this platform to uh, different uh, DC DC activities, and, um, I mean Washington DC activities like. Um, sensor networks and uh, Internet of Things networks for you know, analysis, data analysis, testing uh, impl policy implications, and, uh, and basically behavior pat patterns of the participants. And I think this concludes my presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Next up is Jill Gemmel of the Southeast Scientific Cybersecurity for University Research. Take it away, Jill. Partner schools are Auburn University, University of Alabama at Huntsville, Voorhees College, and Jackson State University. And um, among us, we represent research institutions, small um, rural liberal, art, liberal arts school, a um, primarily uh, grants and contracts driven research environment. Um, some centers of uh, education excellence from the you know NSA and so forth. Um, we've taken a little bit different approach than some of the other projects. We are trying to target NSF funded investigators in the southeast um, because at the end of the day, regardless of what uh, cyber infrastructure 
uh, physical cyber infrastructure may be in place and campus cyber infrastructure, if there's not a connection to the NSF-funded investigator, then they may not be taking um, the best steps they need to to protect their assets. Um, so we, our perspective is that to get the attention of NSF-funded investigators, we want to provide a cybersecurity service that's useful, trustworthy, concise, and under the control of the PI. Um, so at the, our out, desired outcomes is that PI should understand their role and responsibilities in the cyber ecosystem, have an inventory and plan for protecting their assets, uh, know what resources are available to them um, on their campus regionally and nationally, and uh, try to improve the um, interaction between campus IT, um, cybersecurity, and um, um, so forth. So in our region, um, the southeast, there are some um, ways that we differ from the, or that are unique to our region of the country. So um, just looking at new NSF awards in FY, 14, there were 579 institutions that received NSF funding, and of those, 47 were historically black colleges and universities, five were minority-serving institutions, and eight were Hispanic minority-serving institutions. Um, and they are distributed as seen on the map here. So. Uh, among our partnerships, this is uh, why it was important to us to include um, a, a research HBCU and a liberal arts HBCU uh, among our partners because they represent over 10 percent of uh, the institutions that receive NSF funding. So what we're going to do is survey uh, NSF funded investigators in the southeast, uh, trying to determine a baseline of what is the extent of awareness, knowledge, uh, what do NSF investigators perceive as their greatest needs. And before we blast this out to um, thousands of people in the southeast, we'll be using our own five institutions as a sort of phase zero uh, testing to make sure we're sending something out that is uh, concise enough to the point and um, provides the information that we're looking for. Uh, we hope that when we do this Southeast survey that we will identify some frequently asked questions um, that we can use to start preparing uh, education and training materials. Um, in a lot of ways, the uh, of course, we're using the NIST security framework, and most of the content of what we're doing will be based on those wonderful CTSC training materials. Um, our observation is that most, most of those materials were designed for very large scale uh, NSF projects, which is, of course, what the CTSC was originally funded to um, assist with. And um, for the most part, um, at a, at a scale that's bigger than most campuses have awards of 500,000, 350,000, occasionally some million dollar size awards for instrumentation. But, but basically we want to take the approach and materials from the CTSC, downsize them, and basically provide links to NSF investigators that we know how to reach uh, in our region. And we're also looking to see if we can it is possible to do any geoinformatics and bioinformatics domain specific training because there are just so many of those um, uh, projects in the southeast. We're also going to provide a little portable toolkit um, that will be designed by some uh, students that uh, there is a, a Department of Energy pipeline of cybersecurity training at HBCUs in the southeast, and we're going to 
of course, add students to do the specific work, but they'll be working with these other students. So they're going to build little devices to do at least passive training, and um, we'll make those devices available so that it's something that an investigator can get in the mail, plug into their campus network, um, put in some IP range, and do internal testing of their own um, lab. And there's a um, project at Auburn University that's looking at website um, SSL TLS security and how long it takes for those sites to be patched from the time the vulnerability is announced to when it actually does. So that should also give us some sort of measure of um, cybersecurity awareness and resources. Um, we are engaging some people who um, are uh, experts in um, creative media, media and communications who are going to help us develop short, I mean like five minutes or less, uh, AV materials that will be um, designed to answer those frequently identified uh, frequently asked questions that we identify, and in doing our um, work on campuses and with organizations that uh, have a footprint in the southeast, we hope to build communities of people who have common interests in cybersecurity and helping others. Um, for metrics, we're uh, looking at, of course, the number of people we impact. Uh, we're going to be measuring, looking over time at the uh, website vulnerability and time to patch data. Um, we will look at any uh, results from those toolkit scans that are reported voluntarily by the people who use them. Um, we're going to offer some office hours uh, to people and see, you know, follow the number of contacts, and uh, we'll be doing a couple iterations of our final survey, so we'll have a baseline and then um, uh, some follow-up. Uh, without going through all the organizations that are listed here, there are uh, on-campus support, regional organizations, um, scientific domain organizations such as EarthCube that some of our participants are active in, um, and um, this is how we intend to uh, reach people in addition to direct email. So uh, as a final point, uh, please feel free to help us. Uh, if you have uh, training material that's uh, targeted at uh, faculty, let us know. Um, if you have suggestions, we'd love to hear them. And if you'd like to partner with us to extend uh, after you look at what we're doing, if this is a model that you feel is useful and would like to replicate, please contact us. And that's it. OK, thank you very much. Uh, that is it for our pre presentations today. Um, we will now take questions. Anita had to drop away, so what I'm going to do right now is go ahead and put her email address in the chat box. So if you would like to email her, um, you are more than welcome to with any questions you may have about the program. Now, if you want to go ahead and ask any questions of our presenters, everybody else is still on. While we're doing that, um, I'm going to go ahead and give a few news updates. First, if you can go ahead and please take our survey, that would be much appreciated. And I'm going to type the survey into the box as well. And I think that we actually have a question right now. Um, Jill presented about unique features of the Southeast region. For other presenters, are there cybersecurity challenges unique to your region or common challenges across regions? 
presenters, please go ahead and answer at will. Hi, I can answer the questions. So can you guys hear me? Yes, loud and clear. OK, so for, for New Union Gallery, and uh, so we actually uh, are thinking about uh, how to secure the region, right? So you can see here, uh, when the attackers, they attack. They often attack at the weekends and uh, at the holidays, right? And uh, at the, uh, so during that time, I mean, nobody is watching it, uh, most of us, right, I mean, including IT. So we found out that the cybersecurity operation actually has this challenge. That's why we actually designed our project. And uh, we also found that uh, some of uh, the universities, they want all the South, they want all the South, their cybersecurity operation to other people because uh, they do not, uh, I'm not sure why they do that, but anyway, so they do that. They want, uh, for example, Yale University, they want to actually outsource the cybersecurity operation during weekend holidays uh, to some other entities. And um, so that's a kind of a challenge. And it, I mean, so it's hard to find people actually work at those times. So we thought about uh, how to do that, uh, uh, right? And uh, so one way is, uh, okay, for, for example, the Asian people, they, 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 are, they wake up when we sleep, so they can do that, and they do not have a Christmas sometimes. And um, however, then we have the problem of uh, data sharing. So many of uh, our partners, they do not want their data to be exposed to uh, those people. And uh, so this is kind of a challenge. One is uh, all the time to do the operation, one is the data sharing or, or some kind of a privacy leaking. So th those are some of our challenges when we are actually doing the cybersecurity operation. So thank you, that's my, that's my understanding of this problem. Okay, thank you. Does anybody else want to share any challenges that they have seen across their region? All right, next question is, I'd like to hear about sustainability of these projects. Are these projects beginning to end or designed to be ongoing? Uh, I'd like to speak to that. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Um, the um, we're hoping to establish a baseline and perhaps an initial follow-up from you know a one year uh, later follow-up to that, as well as um, discover what longer-term services would be of use to the community. Uh, so two examples. Um, uh, the Clemson Cybersecurity uh, Operations Center, as well as the team at Auburn, have the ability to, uh, at the request of a campus, um, perform uh, network and system scanning services. Do those campuses uh, want that? Would they like that? We don't know that yet, but um, there are, uh, at least on those two campuses, there's an interest in providing that as a longer-term service, um, which would be one form of sustainability. Our um, training materials will be useful for at least a couple of years, I think. Um, before they need to be revisited, the um, that just can't <laughs> that just can't be helped. But again, they may become an example of um, that type of direct to the specific consumer um, that that could be uh, copied by other organizations or used as inspiration uh, by entities that do have uh, ongoing funding. And uh, finally, I, I didn't mention it during my talk, but we, we are not holding workshops because we thought if you hold a regional workshop, probably cybersecurity professionals are going to come. 
and we're trying to reach the investigators directly. So we're going to be holding on-campus workshops, our own campuses, but that's five very different kind of institutions. And we'll actually have um, students as well as ourselves who've been trained to sit down with individual faculty and help them go over uh, how would you do a, a assessment of your own uh, resources that need protecting and the appropriate level of protection for your data instruments. Uh, what do your graduate students need to know about cybersecurity, that kind of thing. And again, that'll be summarized as a model that could be um, replicated on other campuses. Okay, thank you. Um, James Joshi, you would like to share about sustainability. Let me see if I can, I'm going to enable your microphone. James, can you go ahead and try to talk? Okay. Um, anyway, so actually our suspend, uh, sustainability uh, plan is uh, we want to charge uh, those uh, people who want our service. But again, how to how much to charge is a challenge, <laughs> right? So that's how we do it. I think I, I think people actually can unmute themselves. So at the top, there's a unmute. There's, you, you see the button, right? You see mm -hmm. the button like uh, the uh, the phone phone button. You you click that drop down list. You can unmute your phone. So people can unmute themselves. Yeah. Yes, but we'll go ahead and. Um, uh, presenters can, can un unmute yeah. themselves, but not participants. So, uh, James, it looks like you're back to a presenter. So if you can enable your microphone. And if any other presenters would like to add a few words at this time, you are more than welcome to go ahead and do so. Yeah, I would like to. This is go, leader. Go ahead. PW. Yeah, no, I just wanted to add a few words towards the uh, sustainability of the project, and I'm talking about sector only. So uh, NSF funding basically helped us to bootstrap the project and uh, helped us to integrate different platforms and facilities. But uh, long term, we already added these courses to uh, our course catalog, so these are not going to go away. And as a matter of fact, we are actually having difficulty to keep up with interest. We've generated in the both region and you know academic and um, you know for profit private you know uh, communities. We are actually having people really just trying to work with us to uh, uh, to design. Uh, trainings, events, and so forth. And all these are actually paying customers, obviously from the student side, you know, because you know this is a part of the tuition, paying for a seat, paying for an event, uh, coming from the industry as well. So we see this actually as a very effective uh, you know, revenue generating machine long term. This is, uh, as far as we can say, this project is not going to end anytime soon. I know once we, you know, the funding it really just was, uh, designated to uh, help us to uh, change the previously funded platforms, you know, uh, funded by NSF and uh, help us to bring together the different technologies, you know, as, you know, uh, used to utilize by uh, Michigan Cyber Engine and us. But long term, this is actually going to be a very, I would say, profitable endeavor. Would anybody else like to say anything presenter-wise on this subject? OK, it looks like we have somebody typing one more thing. While that is being typed, I would like to ask those attendees that are still on to please take our survey, which has been linked in the chat box if you have time. Um, you can always go back and revisit it. I think it is linked on our webinars page. Also, our next presentation is on January 23rd, the Open Science Cyber Risk Profile presented by CTSC's Von Welch and collaborator Sean Pysert of UC Davis. Um, for more information on upcoming webinars, to view past webinars, 
or to leave feedback on this webinar, as mentioned, please visit trustedci.org backslash webinars. Um, if nobody has any additional questions, then we will go ahead and dismiss for this morning. Thank you all for attending, and thank you to our presenters. You guys did a great job, and have a great day.